Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Firefighter Matt Davis, and along with help from my other public education team members, uh, Firefighter Scott Harris and Firefighter Ryan Titcomb, today we're going to bring to you some online education uh, due to the current epidemic that we're all in with the COVID-19 virus. Uh, we're going to basically attempt to bring you kids into our world in the fire station as opposed to us coming to you at all the schools with school being canceled for the remainder of the year. Like I said, my name is Firefighter Matt Davis. I've been a firefighter in the town of North Andover for over 17 years. I was born and raised in North Andover. My family and I currently still reside in North Andover and I have two daughters in the North Andover school system. Uh, I've been teaching for approximately 12 years and I've run the uh, department's fire ed public education team for five years. A few things we're going to cover today. We're going to go over smoke alarms, where you can find them, what they do, how they work, how to test them what we call get out and stay out in the fire department. Safe place, meeting place, what it is, where it is, we'll give you a few examples. Proper use of the 911 system, what we call stay low and below, uh, what to do when you come across smoke, fire. Another thing that you kids commonly know is stop, drop and roll. We're gonna go over that, but we've added a new aspect. Stop, cover, drop and roll, and we'll go over why that's important. And what to do if you can't exit your house or can't exit a room or wh wherever you are if you're, you're not able to exit due to a smoke or fire. First thing we're going to cover is smoke alarms or what some people know as smoke detectors. As you can see here, this is your typical detector. It's a uh, hardwired detector. You can see these three wires here. This, these detectors are normally plugged into your electrical system in the house. And the reason for the battery is basically it's a battery backup. If you lose power in your house, you still want to have some type of protection with your fire alarm. The reason for the hard wiring is so that all of your detectors within that house are intertwined. They're all tied in. So if one detector goes off, say, in your basement and you're upstairs, that detector is going to set off all the de de uh, detectors within the house to let you know that there is a problem. So what is a smoke alarm? A lot of kids, they can point, us, point them out to us all the time, but they don't know what they do. A smoke alarm or a smoke detector, it's a device that senses smoke. It's typically an indicator of fire. Smoke alarms and detectors, they generally issue a local audible or, or basically a loud alarm that you can hear or even a visual alarm from the detector itself. Um, and like I said, if one detector goes off, you're going to get se several detectors that are going to go off. They're all interlinked within your electrical system. And kids, whenever we ask them, we're in the fire safety house, we'll have them point out the smoke detectors. We always, we're hoping that they're going to point high. We teach the kids that smoke detectors are high and there's a reason for that. You want to mount your smoke detectors or your smoke alarms high on the walls because smoke rises. Smoke goes up. It's warm, it's hot, it's going to rise. So that's the reason being for putting your smoke detectors on the ceiling. Or if you're going to wall mount them, we recommend that they're within 12 inches of the ceiling. A lot of kids get frightened when they hear the smoke detectors or the alarms. This here, it's a link to a YouTube video. It's basically an hour of what a smoke alarm sounds like. So Firefighter Ryan's going to join us now and he's going to go over uh, the basics of the smoke detector, how to test it, how to change the batteries. Firefighter Ryan? How's everyone doing? Like Matt said, I'm Firefighter Ryan. I'm just going to go over the basics of a smoke detector. Uh, what it sounds like, how to test it, how often we should test it, and lastly go over uh, when and how to change the batteries. So this is a typical uh, smoke detector that you have in your homes, they're all look alike. Um, and to test it, we want mom and dad to go around once a month and just press the test button and just make sure it works, okay? And this is what it's going to sound like, just so you guys can hear it. You're going to press and hold it. Some of them have audible, what they say words. That's what it's going to sound like. So this is a combination smoke detector and carbon monoxide detector. So that was just saying that there's no 
carbon monoxide sense them at home. Um, so they're, they're tended to be loud, so you can hear them, obviously. But if you do hear them, you know, it's going to alert you to get out of the house. Um, but you don't want to be afraid and start running, okay? And like I said, mom and dad are going to test these every month, once a month. Make sure they're working and stuff like that. Uh, the next thing is they all should have battery backups. Uh, like Matt was saying, most are hardwired, but they do have battery backups. And it's important to make sure that the batteries in these are, are always fresh and new so that they work if you do lose power. Um, so we always recommend you want to change all the batteries in the smoke detector twice a year. Okay, and a good way to remember it is when we do daylight savings time, we have to change the clocks either forward or back uh, twice a year for daylight savings time. So that's a good way to remember to change all the, uh, the batteries in the smoke detector. And obviously mom and dad are going to do that as well because they're going to have to take it off the ceiling and, and just change the batteries. So, but that's basically the, the basics of the smoke detector. All right. Thank you, Firefighter Ryan. So the next question is, you hear that smoke detector activate, you hear the alarm go off, should you panic? Should you run around? Should you hide? No matter where you are, what we recommend is you get outside immediately. If you're at your house, if you're at the movies, if you're at the mall, at the library, you need to get out. Get outside safely. Never go back inside once you are outside. You don't want to go back in for a pet, you don't want to go back in for a game or your favorite toy. We at, we at the North Indoor Fire Department, we recommend get out and stay out. That's a, a simple way that we teach the kids, once you're outside safely, stay outside until you're told that it's safe to go back in. Try to remain calm. Like I said, don't hide during an alarm. That will only make it harder for us firefighters to find you. We've heard kids say, well, I'm going to hide under my bed or I'm going to hide in a closet. I'm going to hide in the bathtub. People think it's safe in the bathroom because of water. Firefighters, police officers, we have one job. We're there to help you. We're there to put the fire out. We're there to keep you safe. So please don't hide from us. Who can tell you when it's safe to go back inside? Well, there's a few things we first have to do before we clear you to go back inside. We need to enter your home or business, wherever the alarms are sounding, and determine what the cause is. It could be something as simple as a, a battery that's about to die that needs to be changed out. Could be dirt in the smoke detector, dust. So we have to determine why that alarm's sounding. So once we've determined that cause, if it's not an emergency, the fire department or a responsible adult will tell you it's safe to go back in. Then you can return to your home. Where do we go once we get outside? You're outside safely, the alarms were sounding. This one is very important. Something we've been teaching since I first started teaching 12 years ago. It's a safe place or meeting place. What that is, it's a place that should be known by your entire family. Somewhere far enough away from your house that you're safe and that we can come in and do our jobs. The fire department, when we come to a call, if it's a call for smoke or fire, we're not gonna send one truck, we're gonna send every truck that we have. If it's a fire, you're gonna get two fire engines, you're gonna get a 100 foot ladder truck, and you're gonna get two ambulances. We need a lot of room to work, and we wanna make sure that we can do our job as safe as we can and not have to worry about hurting you or a member of your family. A few good examples of meeting places. Could be a neighbor's house. Could be a tree across the street. Could even be the common area in a cul-de-sac or at the end of a long driveway. If you don't live near any houses, if you're way out country and you have a long driveway, best thing for you to do is get as far away from your house as you can, go to the end of that driveway, step off to the side and wait for our arrival. So the, the homework I have for you kids tonight is if you do not have a safe place or a meeting place, if you've never even heard of that expression, I want you to get mom or dad or whoever you live with and I want you guys to come up with a meeting place or a safe place. Somewhere that you all know that when that alarm goes off or something is not right, that you get outside to that safe place so that A, you're safe, and B, you can account for everybody in your family. Kind of like an attendance that your teacher does in class. As you see there in the picture, know your family's meeting place. Next up, we have proper use of the 911 system. When to call 911. I ask the kids all the time in the classrooms, do we call 911 when we're playing basketball and our ball goes over the fence? What do you think? No. Do we call 911 if we're watching a movie, eating popcorn, we run out of popcorn? 
That's not an emergency. Call 911 only in an emergency. And an emergency is defined as something that's serious, unexpected, and often dangerous and requires immediate action or medical attention. A couple examples, like I said, medical injury or medical problem, alarm sounding within the house, smoke or fire within the house, that's an obvious emergency. And on the police side of things, any type of crimes being committed within your house or around your house. In all these cases, call 911. So a few helpful hints or tips for you kids when you're calling 911. First thing to do, explain your emergency. Know your address. Most kids at this point, if you're in the school system, you know your address. Give your name and phone number. That way if you do happen to hang up or you get disconnected, dispatch or the, the people, t the call takers can get back in touch with you. Answer questions calmly. Try to remain calm at all times if possible. And lastly, follow instructions. Do not hang up until you're told to do so. This next one's very important. Uh, what do we do if we encounter smoke in our home? Well, smoke travels upwards, so we try to teach kids stay low and below the smoke. Smoke is going to travel up towards the ceiling, towards the path of least resistance. Once it hits that ceiling, it's going to start to travel across, as you can see here. It's going to go across the ceiling line and start to what we call bank down. It's going to form a smoke layer that slowly drops down. So we teach kids stay low and below the smoke. Smoke harms people in many ways. In the, most, the, the worst way is that it takes away your ability to breathe. That's why firefighters, we wear what we call a, an SCBA or a self-contained breathing apparatus. As you can see here, this is our Scott pack. These are what we wear on our backs. These bottles are full of just compressed air. People like to say, oh, you wear oxygen tanks. That's not true because oxygen is flammable and we would be in deep trouble. So these are just compressed air tanks that we wear on our backs hooked up to these masks that allows us to breathe in a smoke-filled environment. And here's what we look like when we're all geared up. So that's why we say, if you see smoke, get out because we can go inside, we can do work, we can breathe in that smoke-filled environment with our SCBA on. So what do you do if you encounter the smoke in your home? The smoke and heat will be high up at the ceiling like we said, so you should stay low and below. I'm gonna have Firefighter Ryan come up and do a little, do a little demonstrating here. So let's pretend that myself and Firefighter Ryan, we're in the, we're in the house, and Firefighter Ryan's in his room, I'm down the hall, and he comes into his hallway and he notices that there's a little bit of smoke in the hallway. Do we think he should just walk right through like it's no problem? I don't think so. What do you think you should do, Firefighter Ryan? So, if, like Firefighter Matt said, if you see smoke, you want to get low and below. So you're going to get down on your hands and knees and you're going to crawl out, basically just like this. And you're going to try to stay as low as you can. Because if I were to stand up, and breathe all that smoke in, that would, that would harm my lungs very bad and, I, and I'd get sick. So a question that Firefighter Ryan and I get all the time is, well, what if I get to a set of stairs and there's no smoke? So what do you think you should do if you're going through the room, Ryan, and there's smoke in the room, but you get to the stairway and there's no smoke? What do you think you should do? Right, so if you get to the stairs or anything like that, there's no smoke, you're able to see clearly, and then you can stand up and you can walk, so you're not gonna have a possibility of uh, injuring yourself or falling down the stairs. If you can see, and you don't see any smoke around, stand up and walk outside, don't run. Now what if you're in that same set of stairs and there happens to be a light smoke? How would you go down the stairs? Uh, probably on my butt. Yep. And just kind of shimmy on down. So you're still low below the smoke, but you're not standing up, breathing it in. Um, but that way you can get down easily. You can basically scooch down the stairs any way that you can get down safely. Stay below the smoke. Like Firefighter Ryan said, one step at a time on your butt. It sounds funny, but it's going to be the safest way. Cover your face with a towel. I'm going to have Firefighter Ryan uh, demonstrate. Cover your face with a towel or even your shirt. If you don't, yeah. not everybody walks around with a towel 24 hours a day, so you can just pull your shirt up over your face. What that's going to do is that's going to protect your eyes, your nose, your mouth. It's going to keep as much smoke possible out of your air airway and your lungs as you can. And lastly, get outside. Where are you going to go once you're outside? 
to your safer meeting place. And what number are we going to call? 911. You got it. Thank you, Firefighter Ryan. All right. Next stop. What do I do if the fire gets on my clothes? Should we run around as fast as we can? I don't think so. Should we hit it with our hands? I would say no, because there's a strong possibility you're gonna burn your hands if you're trying to put that fire out. Should we jump up and down? Nope. I'm gonna have Firefighter Ryan come up once again and he's gonna tell us why these three things are a bad, bad idea. So Firefighter Ryan, why shouldn't we run around as fast as we can if our clothes are on fire? So if your clothes are on fire, the worst thing you can do is run around, uh, jump up and down. Basically, you're gonna create more oxygen for the fire to get bigger. Um, so you don't want to do that because it's going to get worse. All right. What about jumping up and down? Same thing. Jumping up and down yep. is obviously going to make uh, it, the fire worse, more oxygen on it. It could get onto your face. So you don't want to do that either. And like I said before, if the fire was on uh, Firefighter Ryan's pants and he started patting it with his hands, trying to put it out with his hands, more likely than not, he's going to burn his hands. So the answer to all those questions is no. So what we're going to teach you guys now, it's a little different than what you're used to. You guys are used to the stop, drop, and roll. We want you to do something new. It's called stop, cover, drop, and roll. And we're going to go over that here. So Firefighter Ryan, he's going to be walking around. He's going to you know, so hear the smoke alarm, and he's going to turn around. And next thing you know, the, the fire has caught his pants. He, his pants are on fire. Yep. So say your pants or your shirt catches on fire. First thing you want to do is don't panic. Stop wherever you are. Next thing you want to do is cover your face. This is the new step that we're teaching kids. Um, why is it important to cover your face? Because you're basically protecting your eyes, your nose, and your mouth from any type of smoke or flames. Um, and you want to make sure that that's protected. So you're going to stop right where you're doing, cover your face, you're going to drop, and then you're going to roll back and forth as fast as you can, just like that, okay? And basically what you're trying to do is, is smother the, f the fire on your clothes or put it out by removing all the oxygen and it's going to um, smother and hopefully and, and put the fire out from your clothes. Yep. Another good way is if I was there with Firefighter Ryan and I saw him struggling, I saw his clothes on fire and he was having a hard time putting it out, I could smother him with a blanket or a comforter or a jacket, something that's going to cover him and take the oxygen away from that fire and, and keep it from spreading. All right. Thank you, Firefighter Ryan. Next question, what should you do if you can't exit your house or wherever you are safely because of fire and smoke? Uh, we get this question all the time from the kids. They'll constantly ask, well, what do we do if we can't get out? What do we do if I'm here and I can't get out? So we're going to go over a few tips. First, try to remain calm. Don't panic. Stay in whatever room you're in. Immediately shut the door. This is the most important thing. I can't stress this enough. If you're in your bedroom, if you're in the living room, if you're in the dining room, some room that has a door, and you're safely in that room, you can't, if you can't escape, let's, let's use this as an example, you're in your bedroom, you look down, you hear the alarm sound, you look down the hallway, and it's full of smoke and fire. You can't get out. What I want you to do right away, first thing, shut that bedroom door. Next thing I want you to do is place something at the base of that door. Could be a blanket, a comforter, like I said, a jacket, something that's going to be stuck wedged underneath that door that's going to keep as much smoke out as possible. Get to a window. And the kids ask all the time, well, what if I don't have a window in my room? I, in my 41 years, have never seen a room without a window. So I want you to get to that window and open it if possible. If you need to break it, break it. Kids ask all the time, well, can I break it? If you can do so safely. Scream and make as much noise as you can to alert people, firefighters, even police officers that are driving around. You want to let it be known that you're in that window where your location is so we can find you. I know your kids are good at screaming too. And like I said, we will find you. Life safety is our number one priority in the fire department. So if we pull up to a fire and we know we're told by somebody that there's a, a young child or a senior citizen, doesn't matter the age. If we know that there's somebody in that building and we know where they are, our number one priority is to go in and get them. 
prior to putting the fire out. Life safety is number one. So this concludes our classroom presentation. This is what my team would have presented starting for the next couple of weeks at all the public schools within town. Um, we know it's unfortunate that you guys, you kids are going to be missing the rest of your school year. But uh, we're going to do as much as we can to make these videos so you guys can see the classroom presentation as well as the fire safety house. We're going to get working on that as soon as we can. Most of you kids know that's the little house that we bring to each school. We've got the kitchen, we've got the fireplace, the uh, living room, and the bedroom. And we put the fake smoke in it. A lot of kids call it the smoke house or the firehouse. We're going to do a video on that. And uh, we're also going to be working on some videos of some firefighter tours, uh, showing you all our trucks, showing you the station. So we appreciate your time. We hope you guys all stay uh, healthy, stay safe, and we will see you then. Thank you.